Talk some shit. Here we go. There mm. we go. Well, you know, we're kind of like we're kind of like live, so it's okay. So, all right. By the way, I haven't heard anything from uh, Buckwold. I haven't heard anything uh, well, from them. Um, just there's so you know, been we're, live. we're live, like there's fans listening. Oh, yeah. so okay. You know, yeah. well, right. Okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> so I was gonna say. So you know, I said we're live. I wasn't kidding. I was like, no, we're really live. So, okay. Yeah, I just, All right. I just you know. You want to do the? Do, 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 yeah, yeah, we're gonna do the thing now. So it'll be exciting. Do the for thing the, for the fan. Here we go. We'll do the thing. We'll do the thing. This is Two O F Entertainment. Well, here we go. It's the man that promises you nothing and delivers. It's the veritable man motor mouth. It's Road Woods who feels the need to call himself Rob Vega. It somehow makes him feel important. Anyway, do have a listen and try not to throw up. That's like my favorite thing, the try not to throw up thing. Here, just for people and on acid. Not, there you and go. try not to throw up. Yes. This, like is, this is for the people on acid. Happy Thanksgiving in America. And we'll go back to the normal look. There we have it. <laughs> we, I'm sorry, we have a normal look? Really? Well, we do. Yeah. Okay. okay. You, you didn't know? Yeah. Of course. I did not. I didn't. Okay. I, Generally, didn't norm- I had you in a circle for a little okay. bit. Generally, normal and me don't. don't not not okay. really. Okay. Well, unless you're Marty Feldman, then you go after Abby Normal. Okay. Okay. Now why you don't know that from Young Frankenstein? No, not a fan. Okay. Right. That's, that's Steven. Uh, All right. Yeah. How you doing? Well, Happy Thursday. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody in America that's watching. So interesting. Um, I had to. Was it? Was it Thanksgiving? Uh, oh no, I was thinking of Halloween. Yeah, um, we. Uh, I was doing a thing on my show about Halloween, and and of course everybody thinks it's an American thing. And I went, no, no, this yeah. started in Ireland. It started right. in Ireland. That's where it comes from, and it started in about eight nine hundred, whatever A.D. And the reason for it, yeah. and the reason for it was because the um, the line between the line between the living and the dead right. was uh, very. It was you know, uh, uh, uh. and yeah. uh, well, they were they were celebrating the end of the harvest, or I don't know what it was, and the onset of winter, and they wanted to scare all the spirits away, so they dressed in strange costumes, and I so it went. But the Wiccans just wanted to like party naked. Hmm? I thought what? it was because the Wiccans just wanted to party naked. No, nah, no. Nah. Really? Oh, that's nah, upsetting. It, that's what I. So that's what? what I call my kids. Apparently, no, but seriously, apparently it's called something called the the festival the what the the festival of Sua Suwen Suwen. That's how Suen? you say it. You don't okay. spell it like that. It's an Irish word. Something to do with okay. the festival of Suwen, or I don't know. Something to do with that, and that's All what right. it was about. And then it got, uh, but I'm just saying Halloween is an Irish thing. Then it was a Scottish thing, and then it became. Then I went across the pond. Yeah, but yeah, it, so certainly we we certainly the hell out of it. You're welcome. <laughs> but that's. Uh, that's Halloween. Now, of course, obviously Thanksgiving, which is interesting, because if you think of the way that started. The land acquisition game. Hi, we've come to take your land. Can we chat? Yeah. <laughs> well, think about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is nothing more than a land acquisition game. And what sporting event that we watch on Thanksgiving? Football. And what is football? A land acquisition game. So uh, but, we just go with our heritage. But to be fair, but to be fair there's so much that doesn't have anything to do with the history. I mean, what on God's green earth does a Christmas tree have to do with Jesus? Nothing. What is, oh, what is Ch- stop it. Is, Everybody knows that uh, Melvin, Melvin Chuck- Blumenthal came up with that idea because uh, he wanted to make money. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, that makes sense. That makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> and the, what was it? The, the chocolate, the chocolate bunnies. I mean, come on. You know, oh, so, come on. The bunnies are chocolate? Is, oh, point is, point yeah. is, it doesn't yeah. have to be connected. Why does what we do now have to be connected to what it doesn't have to be? It's fine. It's okay. Well, I, I actually all. think I like the idea of Thanksgiving. I think it's good. I, I, really? Who cares where it came from? Right now, yeah. uh, if, if it gets people to stop bitching and moaning about stuff, great. What country are you in? Hey, you know what I'm doing today for Thanksgiving? I do this every year, and people from around the world come What do you think, Stephen? Well, first of all, we're going to have a come is your favorite nude pilgrim party 
very popular. Um, that's the first thing. <laughs> so, and what I'm, what I'm thankful for is all the hot chicks that come to come to your favorite new pilgrim party. Okay. So that's an annual thing. So, okay. yeah. And we have a builder's house of pain. So where else? All right. uh, what else could you want? And later You're today, also- I'm having, yeah. uh, I'm, a, I'm invited to a cigar hearth where we're going to have Scotch cigars. And that's come right. as your favorite new pilgrim. So I'm excited. Okay. About that. Yeah. Did you say yeah. new pilgrim? Nude. N U D E. Come as your favorite. Oh, new nude. Oh. Yeah. So who's your who's your favorite nude pilgrim? Who would that be? Um, I, I I dress up every year as John Smith. All I do is wear a big hat. That's it. So there you go. Nothing else. That's, Just a that's cigar. all you're allowed to wear is a hat. Yeah. 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 With a cigar. a cigar. Yeah. I have a cigar and a scotch. And a hat, and that's it. And the girls are allowed to wear the little collar thing with little collar things on their wrist and uh, little hats, and that's it. It's very so, so you in a hat and a cigar, and that's it. That's it. Yeah, I've I've, I've seen it. It's not very behind. That's that's what I say. Whoa. So, but, uh, yeah. Whoa. So, then, yeah. Um, I know it's it's an annual thing. I've been doing it for years. Yeah, and people from all over come, and I don't understand why. Hey, speaking of crazy things, I've got to say this. So we had um, this story. We've um, you familiar with Jim Jeffries, the comedian? Sure, everybody's familiar with Jim Jeffries. He's almost funny. Good, good. He was here. I went to see him. He was here last yeah. Saturday. I went to go and see him. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic, yeah. just great, yeah. just great. Yeah. Uh, but that's. I mean, oh, we could talk at nauseum about him, and but he's fine. He doesn't yeah. need the views. He's all good. What I do yeah. want to, what I, what that, what, what happened at the, at the, at the performance, what I do want to talk yeah. about. So, yeah, let me tell you what happened. So, I had some nice VIP tickets because, you know, I know people right. and yeah. Jim was right there and it was great and Ooh. I was waving you at him. And he was going, Who's this fucking idiot? No, no, it was right. always good. no, it was. He was saying, Hey, Rob, how you doing? No, he wasn't doing that. So, <laughs> I, I was sitting watching him, and it was great. I mean, he's fantastic. He's a master storyteller. Um, very honest, very... I mean, the, the thing about comedy... Actually, I'll get into that later. What happened was behind me, there was a woman and her husband, and she was commenting, like, the whole way. Oh, this is so offensive. Oh, that's whatever. And I and what I should have done, but I didn't want to because we were enjoying the performance. I just kind of blocked her out. Because, you know, if you take yeah, yeah. someone on, now it's a thing. Yeah. And, you know, you've, I don't want to do that. But what right. was going on in my head was this. Um, do you not – why would you go – what did you think yeah. was going to happen at a Jim Jeffries comedy performance? It's kind of right, like right. Um, it's kind of like a medical student, a surgical student, right, yeah. goes and yeah. watches uh, an operation being performed because they want to learn, see how it's sure. done. And they go, sure. oh, my God. There's so much blood. Why is there so much blood? Mm-hmm. What did you think happens while they operate? The comedy show? <laughs> what do you think happened? And it just it just made me think, why why did people do that? It, it it's yeah. we live in this world where where people just get a it, it's getting worse. They're offended by why would you go to a concert like that? Yeah. Do some homework, do some research, figure it out, find out. Let the people who want to enjoy enjoy it. Why would you affect our enjoyment? And I'm seeing this a lot at comedy evenings. Freaking hecklers commenting yeah. on what the guy's doing. The point of comedy is it's supposed to stir shit up. It is right. honest. It stirs shit up. And that's what it's supposed to do. There's no such thing as uh, a quiet, delightful, tame comedy evening it's in a comedy evening no why would you do that why would you you know you, why why do they do that here's what you need to do you need to find out who this lady is and then when jimmy carr comes into town have her go see that show oh <laughs> oh you know they work at huh? jimmy and 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 jeff and uh, jim yeah. jimmy and jim that jimmy and jeff where did jeff come from jimmy and jim yeah, yeah oh oh jimmy carr I love Jimmy Carr. Jimmy Legend. Carr is, hyster- is hysterical, and when and I like when the hecklers heckle him. He did. Oh, a guy, there's a guy named Rake that heckled him, and he went through this whole thing at the oh. very end. He literally just trashed Rake and his mom. And I was just like, I love. I was just, but here's the other thing, and, and I, I will give. I, I think the wokeness is about to die because the Trump administration does not believe in wokeness. 
So I think this political correctness crap is about to go bye bye. I think people are I think tired. Everybody, I know I am. I've been tired of it I since think it started. Everybody. But then, yeah. I think everybody's I think fed up enough. with it. I really yeah. think they do. I mean, yeah. we here's the thing about comedy. We actually need comedy. We need it. Yeah. We need that release. We need that. My God, you can't. If you don't shut, if you shut people up, they'll they'll figure out another way. We have yeah. to have that. We've got to joke about stuff like that. The offense is with the person listening. It's not with the comedian. Right. It's That's your true. problem. It's shit yeah. you've got to work out. And the fact that you get offended means there's something in it that's resonating with you. Maybe he's talking about you. I don't know. Whatever. What, yeah. what happened to us? And you know what's interesting is, is the offense, the offense yeah. is linked to ignorance. It's it's yeah. like the same box. You know, yeah. damn. Wow. It, um, I mean, if you literally, if you take Jim Jeffrey seriously, yeah. <laughs> wow. Good luck with okay. That. Good luck with right. Good luck with that. Or Jimmy Carr or any of these guys. And so what if they, I mean, the stories they tell, they're yeah. great. I yeah. want a comedian. I want a comedian to tell a story that gets in there, yeah. gets in there. That's what's well, great Ricky about G, it. Everything Ricky Gervais says is true. Oh, so that, that another story, legend. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I love oh. that. These, these are oh, like, this is the legends God. of today. Back in the day when I was growing up, it was like Don Rickles, George Carlin, uh, Pryor. Mm. Those were like, even Robin Williams, those were the comic geniuses of the day. Absolutely. You know, they were great. We need and that. Now, no, but we need it, yeah. Stephen. We oh, need them. Now, we, we've got to we've got to shut this offend offenders offensive or offended people yeah. offended people just not mm -hmm. shut them up but just dude why yeah. yeah it's like if you if you if you don't like drugs don't go to a drug party right. you know, whatever I mean you know if you don't like cigars no one says you have to smoke one but don't oh, sit no, with the guy smoking with the cigars like oh, it smells so bad well uh, then leave go yeah, away. Go Bye. Can I tell Don't you a story come and about tell. That? Well, before you do, it's like you go to a bunch of like you guys. You all sit around with yeah. your cigars. You join life. Yeah. You go fuck. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, life's a bit shit. Here I go. I'm having my cigar. I'm relaxing. Right. Whatever. And then the guy comes and sits between you, and he says, "Do you know if this is so unhealthy? Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's bad for you." And you go, "What are you doing? What yeah, is well, what yeah. is that gonna do?" Do you think that's going to make all these guys put their cigars down and go, you know yeah. what, Stephen? I didn't realize that. I yeah, must yeah. be a moron. Oh, my God. I'll have yeah. to find another vice. Sorry. Yeah, you went Asian say. hookers and scotch. That's the next vice after that. Okay. Anyway, oh, God. Um, yeah, bro, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm an equal opportunity lover. Um, you know, which is really funny. Is that first of all, when we sit around and have cigars, we bitch about absolutely nothing. We just make fun of all the poor people. That's the first thing. The second exactly. thing is we talk about the lizard people, which we are, and how we're taking over the world. And thank God for Trump, because now everyone's going uh, to basically be our slaves. So we're very excited. So we have exactly. nothing but the happiness and drinking 50 year old McCallan or 40 year old Glenn Fargus and smoking good cigars. Uh, all good. Um, so, in that respect, on the cigar side, when I lived in Manhattan, I used to frequent a restaurant all the time. And they would let me, they literally set me up a corner outside that was covered and very nice where I can smoke cigars. And I would bring guests there and we would smoke cigars. But we were always polite. We would always ask the tables around us, are you okay with it? If they said no, we wouldn't light up. If they left, we would. Cool. So I remember there was like five of us were having cigars and we're eating and we're enjoying steak and you know, the whole thing. And then this couple came in from like, I don't know, from the Midwest. You could tell they were Midwesterners because they were beef fed. You know what I'm trying to tell you? I'm like, this woman, she was huge. She wore stilettos on the beach. She would strike oil. That's how big she was. In fact, <laughs> she was so big. Let me tell you how big she was. And she stood on a corner. The police came over and said, break it up. I'm talking big. And she couldn't go for Thanksgiving to Macy Days because they want to put strings on her. Anyway, be fed. So they complained to the manager who knew us and said, they're smoking cigars. And the lady, and they said, but you wanted to be seated outside. They were here ahead of you. And the lady said, well, we want them to put it out. And the manager, I heard that we heard the whole conversation said, because we were like, fine, we'll put it out. Like, you know, the manager said, this gentleman comes to our restaurant two to three times a day. And whether he comes by himself or brings 10 or 15 people and spends hundreds of thousands of dollars with us a year. She said, how often are you in New York? 
And I was like, whoa. And, and then she said, if you don't want to be out here, you can go sit inside. She said, we're not asking our best customer and his associates to put their cigars out. And, I, and they got another one inside. And that was it. I thought that was, that was so perfect to your point. Why would you sit next to the guy smoking cigars to complain about it? It was perfect. Yeah, but that's what people that's what these yeah. people do. That's what they I do. They go that. to these comic they go to these comedy shows. Um, I had a, a small taste of it, but there were a couple of comedy shows uh I've I've seen online and actually uh, uh people that friends of mine have gone to where where you have these people a hell is one thing. Yeah, right. you suck, whatever. Whatever, right. and then Jimmy Carr obviously loves doing that, and he and he's 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 a, he's a master at taking them down. Yes, and in fact, as you know, he encourages it, which is fantastic. Yes, um, but that's one thing. You know, guys a bit drunk. Ah, oh, suck. Yeah. Oh, when's the comedy yeah. starting? Whatever. Right. Fine. It's annoying, but it's harmless. But then you get people who go there and they dissect the material, right. and they attack the comedian. And I go, why are you here? That's what I want to know. What have you come here for? Right. Why are you? Why have you paid to watch someone you clearly don't like? Right. Why would you? I don't understand. What it, it's the same thing with these people who protest about situations around the world that know nothing about what's actually going on. Is right. it just to? I saw a guy. I saw a guy online who says it, it's like people sitting around and they've got the protest sign blank. It's a. It's a. It's a placard. Right. And they go, what are we protesting today? What are we writing on the side? Right. Well, where are we going to go? And what are we going to go? What are we moaning about today? Let's moan right. about something. Uh, has everybody got the tents? You got the tents? Are we ready? Okay, yeah. there we go. Who's got the super glue? And away we go. And we protest. Yeah. And we, what? What do you want to change something? Well, then do some work, do some research, yeah. get involved. But, well, we but think for a comedy just... evening, Damn it, man! You know, you know what, Stephen? The, the the offensive thing, and I'm glad. I do think I do think people are getting sick and tired of this. Yeah. I mean, work actually used to be a good thing. It used to mean something. You know, you you're awake, you you smart, you're aware yeah, of things. Technically, it was a term but for now, people. It was a black was person it? term. Yeah. Well, I, we look. We actually had this dialogue on. I forgot what show, but we actually looked. It, it was up a term for what? what? It, for woke started as a term in the black community to be okay. be aware. Be aware of things, not like you just, offend me. And, and which then the is white fine. people, right? Which is good. You should always be aware. But then the yeah. white people, you know, like to call pussies, they got a hold of it. And it was sort of like, oh my God, you, I, I don't care. In fact, I, I read a comment this morning from we did a Lost Dollar Business Club. And I had said, when people work for us, you know, we don't believe in this life work balance. You have to work. Like, that's what we pay you to do. We don't pay you to go come in for three hours. I don't care if you work three hours. You should have to give me everything I need. And the comment yeah. someone wrote was, you would be a horrible boss to work for. And I'm like, yep, for the first 90 days, everybody hates me. And then after that, they're all like, we get it because we make you better. If you think we're going to pay you to be on holiday, you wrong group of people. It doesn't work that way. And that's the problem with the woke and everything else. And everyone's offended and this and that. I, th I think we need to go back to a time where people say what they think, like a comic. And if you don't like really? it, too bad. Put your big boy pants on and, and, tough, and tough it out. And that's but, the problem. You become a society of pansies. But it's almost what what I find. What you know, if someone disagrees with me, mm -hmm. not a problem. But right. then you you need to come with facts. You need to come with yeah. proper um, information that you've 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 done your homework to just Correct. disagree with someone. Well, any fool can do that. Stephen, I disagree with you. Why? I don't know. You <laughs> smoke cigars, and I don't like right. cigar smoking people. Great. Okay. Okay. But what 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 I find extraordinary, you see these debates where mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, comedian X is on a stage and he's taking questions from a group of college kids yeah, and they yeah. fire the most inane bullshit. It's like they swallowed a word salad book. Yeah. And and they're trying to sound like something they're not. And I look at the person asking the question and I go. Because I mean, most of them are the same age as my kids, and I go, right. I just, I just don't understand what they think they're doing. You see, here we go. Let's go, grumpy old man. Certainly, right. when I was growing up, if you wanted to do something, if you wanted to own something or see something or travel somewhere, you found a way to get a job to make the money so that you could do what right. you needed to do. You got on with it. If you wanted to change something in your life, 
or somebody else's life, you did the work. You you right. you found a way. And if you didn't know how to do it, well, then I guess you didn't do it, and that shit didn't change. That's just yeah. the way it is. If yeah. um, I remember years ago, I was in a restaurant here in, in Joburg, and there was a waitress that I was talking to. This was like 30 years ago. So then I was a kid. I was a kid 30 years ago. And <laughs> I was talking to this waitress. She, she was sitting at my table. I wasn't married then, just to be clear. And, <laughs> and we were just talking, you know, just talking about stuff. Now, remember, she was a waitress. And I said, well, right. what are you, you know, what are your plans? And she said, oh, I want to go to Spain next year. I want to go backpacking nice. through Spain. And, and I said, well, that's, that's quite pricey. Yeah, I've been saving. I've been saving for about two years. I've been that's working right. extra shifts. But this is what I want to do. And I said right. to her, after that, she says, I don't know. But my, my aim, I mean, I, I think she, she looked quite dark. She had some Spanish heritage, and she, I don't know, not sure if she was Spanish, but she had this love, this interest in Spain. That was her yeah. thing. She didn't go and beg for money or protest. Why are FA so expensive? Or, ah. she, <laughs> she worked extra shifts, and I don't know what happened, but I guess she just went to Spain and did sure. what she wanted to do. She didn't blame anybody that she was a waitress. She didn't blame the world mm -hmm. for her lack of opportunities. And let's be honest, being a waitress or, I'm sorry, a, what, a, what are they called now? A server? No, it's a waitress. God damn it. A waiter and a waitress. Okay. To hell with that. She hey, was a waitress. Call a flight, what do you call a flight attendant? Do you th I call them waitresses in the sky and they get offended. Are they flight well, attendants? Let me, let, me, let me answer that question for you. Um, yeah, yeah. So what I was going to say is that she, yeah. she went and she got it right. done. She didn't blame anyone. She just got right. it done. Uh, what yeah. do I call? What do I call? What did you call them? Flight attendants. What are, flight attendants. I call them waitresses in the sky. Well, well so um, uh, I mm -hmm. I was on a flight many years ago, sitting next to a very small woman, okay. um, who turned out to be a pilot. She was an airline pilot. Wow! Um, they sit on, sat on phone books to see over the little steering wheel. Cool. Right. <laughs> so she was sitting next to me. Thank you, Stephen. She was sitting well, next to me, and and I will admit. She was a very, I mean, she, she looked about five foot, not even tiny, okay. very small. Oh. And I don't know why, I just, in my biased brain, my bigoted yeah. brain, if yeah. I see a, a, a tiny little woman, I'm not going to think, oh, airline pilot. I don't know why. Yeah. I just didn't think that. I didn't really go through all the possibilities of what she might be. We had a Still great picture. conversation. Yeah. No, we had a yeah. great conversation. She started, we were talking about airplanes, flights. Mm -hmm. And then I, wow, and the stuff that she was saying about the flexibility of the aircraft and blah, blah, blah. And I said to her, do you, do you have some sort of aviation background? And she says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, a, I usually fly this plane, but I'm just hitching a ride back. And just now, when right. after dinner is served, I'm going to go into the back and sleep, and you're going to have to sleep in your chair. And I went, oh, damn. Now what, was my, now, what was my point? Oh, she said, she yeah, yeah. said something interesting to me. She said, one of her bugbears was what how people refer the way that people think of flight attendants. And I said, yeah. What is your what is the issue that you have with yeah. passengers and the way we refer to flight attendants? She said, Well, it's not necessarily you, but she said, most people think they, you know, they they here to serve food and do whatever. And she right. said, A flight attendant is actually a paramedic that serves food. That's what they are. And she was very very yes she said that is ultimately what they are they are paramedics that also happen to serve food not the other way around and I mean, i've always looked at, always looked at them differently since then that's what okay. she told me that was a pilot it was an airline pilot who told me that now is that globally because in america they the can i, I on all the airlines that i have to was on a british airways flight, flight. This was on a British oh, well, Airways. They're, they're, oh, well, that explains a lot. But I was on a flight with British Airways, and I remember the flight attendant said the flight would be much better if there were no passengers. So I have no respect for British <laughs> Airways. So I could care less. <laughs> um, and I was in the front of the bus, and I was just like going to the loo. And I, she said to one of her her flight attendant companions, she goes, this flight would be so much better if there were no passengers. And I'm thinking, yeah, lady, you don't get paid if we don't fly. But anyway, that was fine. But out That's of all fun. the airlines in America that we get stuck on with American and Delta and this one, I will tell you, the best airline with the nicest flight attendants on the planet, Alaskan Air. They go out okay. of their way. And I, now, I don't right. know if they're paramedic. Now, next time I fly commercial, I have to ask, are you guys also paramedics? Because I've never heard that. But, I'm, mm. but they go out of their way 
helping if you if you like if i see someone uh, an, an older older lady that needs help with their luggage or a man i will jump up and help them that's just the gentleman in me but they will help people they're very polite they're very nice they're whatever other airlines the flight attendants will be like well, I, if you can't pick it up i can't pick it up i'm like what the hell is that like come on what do you please you know have a little decorum so they don't so alaskan airlines number one but i don't know i didn't know they were paramex i don't see like some that's of these what people, you told me I, I, maybe but i'm going to ask next time i fly on yeah on the airline like are you guys also Dude. paramedics yeah and see because now i'm very curious because out of their training apparently respect for yeah. them but yeah you know because every time somebody gets sick on an I airplane mean, what do they do is there a doctor or board all right well, two things a paramedic. Yeah, well that's different two things two things yeah. one yeah what? this portion of the program is sponsored by alaskan airlines um <laughs> No, uh, I've just had to, welcome, I, I, as Airlines. you were saying that, I was thinking, wow, yeah. Stephen, this is an infomercial. It's fantastic. I know, right? It's a, um, well, hey, what are you Stephen, charging me? That off the, I hope you're charging just, it. Let me just check that off the paid us list. All right, good. <laughs> yeah, just make sure it's your, your dollar. All right. Um, and But I, but having said that, I mean, yeah. she said that to me, and and as like you, I did gain a new respect, and I thought, okay. But right. with that in mind, and I'm not trying to discourage flight attendants en masse here, but I have seen some flight attendants in my time that definitely fit the bill. Sure. Mm -hmm. well, you know, fit strong. And I thought, okay, they could probably handle a paramedic situation. But others, right. not so much. Yeah, not no, so I agree. Much. Not so much. What are you going to do exactly? And I don't want you near me in a medical emergency. Thanks very much. <laughs> I just <laughs> I'm sorry, you're gonna give me mouth to what? I don't. I'll die. I'm good. Yeah, no, just let me die. I'm okay. Oh, look at that! I just recovered. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I just <laughs> if I think of so so, I never really checked it. I never did the Google thing. I never found out. I never. I actually yeah. never asked. It just went in and went. Hmm, interesting and little factoid. Right. And um, her name was pilot's name was Rachel. She was an aunt. Yeah, she was an. I have a. I think I have her last name somewhere. I, she gave me a number and said, next time you Ooh. come on a. Vert this on the flight, you know, come and check the deck. And I never did. Uh, I yeah. never saw her again. But uh, somewhere in my contacts is her. And now I'll maybe I should give, her, give her a call. I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, she, not sure if she's flying. She, she, mm -hmm. If she's still flying, we'll find out where she flies. And if she's still flying with British Airways, next time I get on a British Airways flight, I'll be like, Are you Rachel? And I'll be like, Do you remember this passenger? And if she says yes, I'm going to say, What phone book? Touch it at all. She's terrible. And you know, I have a question. When she said she was going to go in the back and sleep and crawl up, did she just mean she was small enough that she was just going to crawl up like in a little seat, like a cat? No. Yeah, um, no I cabin crew. They, they apparently have, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have some yeah, bunks in the true. back, and she was going to go and she was going to yeah. out. That, that was the thing that stuck most. Of me. I thought, God damn it. I would. Hello. What about the passengers yeah. here? Hello. Are you no. Can I, well, and she literally so walked up and she said, Good luck getting some sleep. I was in business class. And she said, Good luck getting some sleep. I went, oh, but I'm just saying business fine. class now in first class, when when I fly that overseas, yeah, you know, I no problem going to sleep. I mean, the seats are luxurious. Well, well, the flight, all right. This business class seat, I had some points, so I bought a regular okay. seat and I got upgraded. But okay. it kind of had a you could kind of lie flat, but there was just so much stuff going on around that that really? was my problem oh yeah, i don't like a light it was a, uh, when, it, when it was it's a time bit... to go to bed on an airplane that's the only time however, i really get my best sleep however i was okay. a flight many years ago on a south african airways flight when we still used to have an airline because not really the greatest now but this was way back in the day when it was a decent airline Sure. Um, this portion of the program is not sponsored by <laughs> South African <laughs> Airways. Anyway, so I was flying to London, and I had uh, splurged out, got myself that business class ticket. Sure. Also, I love doing that. Get the points. Always, get, always buy the cheap seat. Get upgraded. Right. Always, I've always. That's always my thing, because okay. I don't really uh, operate at that level financially. Anyway, so I just get a wholesaler to do it for me. But okay, <laughs> okay, there you go. So. I got on on the flight and I went to my seat and there was someone in my seat and I I was about to start protest. I'm like, what are you doing? And he turns to me and says, oh, I need to sit next to my wife. And I went, ah, great. It's mm -hmm. still my seat. Reaches into his pocket and says, I'm flying first class. You can have my seat. Bye. Love you. Gotta go. And that that was amazing. That yeah. my God. When people say, oh, 
what why is first class isn't worth it yes oh it is oh it yes is. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. And I had the, gr but you know what was crazy about it? It was like a like a eleven hour flight from Johannesburg yeah. to London, and great, it was stunning. But I slept most of the way, and yeah. and yeah. But here's the thing: you think, oh, this is the first time I'm in first class. It's going to be great. I'll get some sleep, and then I'll get up and look at all the stuff. Well, I didn't do that. I got woken up for breakfast and landed in London, and that was, and that it. was it. Yeah. And but it it was. The most it was the most bizarre thing because I had a proper night's sleep and mm -hmm. I changed countries, mm -hmm. <laughs> changed That's spheres, great. changed continents, and it, it felt like five minutes. It was yeah. extraordinary. So definitely well, worth it. But um a friend of mine who think... used to fly for British Airways said to me an interesting yeah. thing. He said, um he, he would go through the cabin, go through the aircraft and just talk to everybody, first business, yeah. coach, whatever. And he said, all the people in um, in in the in the lower classes, right, um, cattle. Would be, right, would be watching movies on their phones, yeah. whatever, right. electronic stuff, you know, right. blue lights, all of that stuff. Right. And in first class, everybody read. No one watched the movies. They're all sitting reading. Right. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I can well, say I, from I, my my experience in first class. That was true. No one had, no one watched movies. No, one. I mean, they had the biggest TVs, the range yeah, yeah. Oh, of whatever. Yeah. You, got like 50, they didn't, you have a 50 inch screen, but they didn't look at it. They were reading. Yeah. Everybody had books yeah. Yeah. Or, or sleeping. What to? Yeah. No one was watching it and it was peaceful, gorgeous. Yeah. When, I, when I go, when I go overseas, whether sometimes business, sometimes first, it just depends. I call my wholesaler, first of all, because I'm a Jew and I'm cheap. So I'm like, get me the cheapest. Business or first class, and, and it's on a real airline. Um, you've probably heard of uh, that's just smart naked Steven. airlines or whatever. Huh? That's just smart. It's just smart. Yeah, well, because it's it's money, and if, whether it's mine or a client's money, I don't want to piss it away. But um, exactly, sometimes I have no problem with that. Fantastic. Between, yeah, yeah. So, sometimes between the difference between business and first is literally a few hundred dollars. I'm like, do it now. Sometimes the difference is like fifty thousand dollars, and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's not worth it. I, I've been been there, done that. Um, so I just enjoy it. And it's flying domestically. What people don't realize is between, well, I don't think we really have first class anymore in America. We have business or for whatever you want to call it, between cat, we call it cattle, cattle plus in front of the bus. So the difference between like cattle in front of the bus sometimes is like 50 or a hundred dollars one way. And I'm like, of course, it's like, let's that, not be crazy. Like I'm, my comfort's more important than, you know, struggling yeah. on an airplane. And especially when yeah. you've traveled overseas, where people go, oh, it's not worth it's worth it because I have to go. Oh, I, yeah. you know, you have to if get on, on whether the eight or fifteen hours or whatever twenty six hours if I'm going to Australia. When I get off the yeah. airplane, I need to be refreshed. I don't need to be like yeah. my legs hurt this hurt because I was in this little seat like this. And that's what people don't get. So you know, the comfort is worth it. And then I found the wholesaling like ten or fifteen years ago or longer. And so it's like I'll fly in front of the bus and it doesn't cost anything. So it's like I'm good. You've you found what? Sorry, what was that last thing you and found? They have what they call ticket wholesalers, and what they do. Oh, oh, okay, for, okay, yeah. For, for the for uh, for business and first, so just, right. And I used it my very one hundred years ago. I had to go to Switzerland, um, right? And I and then from Switzerland I had to go to Monte Carlo. So I found this wholesaler and I called him and said, "What? What's your ticket price?" I'm the, I'm then I'm said four thousand. I'm like, "Well, that's expensive each way." Because that's what it is online. He goes, no, no, four thousand for the whole thing. I'm like, done. Because if I was going to buy it from just say Swiss or whoever round trip, myself was going to cost about twelve grand. Wow. So I use wholesalers quite a bit, and I've got one or two that are like religiously in my speed dial. And when people go, I'm flying overseas. I'm like, call my guy, and they save. Uh, one of my friends is going to Dubai, and they save what? I think eight thousand dollars round trip. For business class and i'm like use a wholesale and people don't i'm like it's it's great and i have no problem right. with it i'm like you know it's listen it's whether it's your money or someone else's money the idea is to save it not piss it away so you do that yeah but yeah. here um I, you mentioned the domestic one there's not much difference i um last year we went down to um cape town and right. which, is, which is just shy of a two-hour flight and right. um I know country's bigger than people think it is. Um, yeah. Two hours, and we thought, eh, we'll do the business thing. I don't generally go on business for a 
domestic flights because they're usually less than an hour and I go, ah. yeah. uh, if it's a similar price, which it usually is not, then sure. Right. But most of the time, there's quite a big difference. But this time we thought, yeah, bugger it. Uh, it was my wife and my son. Uh, and my daughter was, she's living elsewhere. And we, right. we thought we got to, we went to Cape Town for, for two weeks. And uh, it was disappointing because really? I hadn't, yeah, it was because what they did is the plane was, was just one plane. So there were right. no different compartments, but oh. all they did is they just gave us seats around us, but we were in the same seats, yeah. the same everything. We got yeah. a few little extra things, which was kind of weird because we were kind of in the middle of the plane and oh. everybody saw us getting these extra snacks yeah. and stuff. It was just the stupidest. Can I tell you the was, best first class? That was really ridiculous. World. Here's the Hi, best. We're getting first the special snacks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, huh? Here's the best one. So we flew into Qatar to Doha. Now, from Doha to Abu Dhabi is literally a 23 minute flight. And we're in the front of the bus. And first of all, when they take you to the plane, they take you in a special bus. The special bus has these mega leather seats that can only fit like eight people in the bus. It's not a normal bus. It's the premium bus. So you oh. get to sit in this bus. Oh. Of course, you know, very special people. Yes. So they take us to the plane. We sit down. And the lady says to me, before takeoff, sir, would you like dinner on the flight? And I, la I chuckled. I said, yeah, sure. What can it be? And she told me. I was like, I'm sorry. She, it's, it's a 23-minute flight. I was like, sure. I mean, my mind, I'm like, I got to see this. So I'm like, I would love to have dinner on the flight from Doha to Abu Dhabi, 23 minutes. As the plane's <laughs> taking off, she comes to us, puts our trays down, white linen tablecloth, white linen tablecloth. And then as the plane levels off, I guess at 10,000 feet, they're serving the dates, the nuts, the food, the da 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 and like four minutes before we land, they come and collect everything. They take your white tablecloth. And I thought to myself, this is a 23 minute flight. And I got better service on a 23 minute flight than I did in America on a three or four or five hour flight in business class. I'm thinking America, America, the airlines in America need to take a page from Qatar Airlines on a 23 minute flight from Doha to Abu Dhabi, I was just blown away. They, so it, uh, Qatar, Emirates, and uh, um, Singapore are the three best airlines if I have to travel, you know. Um, I mean, I fly Virgin and British and whatever, not willingly. Like if I have to go to London, I always say, can, can we have like kind of the layover flight on one of the others? Because I want that service. Uh, it's just great. But yeah, so it's there's a lot to be said for that. You know, it's like- you I've know, I've only been on Qatar Airways once, and it was, right. yeah. It's out of this world. I, I don't even know if I was in a fancy seat. I might have just been in coach. Um, well, and and it was, even their cattle is beautiful. Like, yeah, it was, it was. The weird thing is, was it didn't feel like I was in a, uh, in a coach seat at all, um, okay. if I remember correctly. Yeah, no, it didn't. Um, and the people were stunning. Wow. Yeah. They were very nice. They were very good. Right. Uh, almost too nice. I don't know. I'm just used to very, not, not offish uh, service, but just, here we go. Here's your dinner. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. And they were, they were, they were kind of, are you okay, sir? Is everything fine? Right. I'm like, yes, I'm fine. I just go, okay. But they were very, they were very concerned that I was, you know, I was happy. Okay. See, and it was old very world, unusual because old, I wasn't used to that. Old world, old school. That's old world, old school. When you, when people used to fly, my my parents would tell me stories and grandparents in the forties, fifties, and sixties when airlining was like when people would dress in suits and ties and like still dress for it. That's how they treated everybody. Like, are you okay? It didn't matter if you were in cattle or in the front of the bus. Are you okay? Is everything good? Blah, what blah, has blah. happened to the world, Stephen? I mean, it's like we've. You know, you hear of these stories. You you watch these old movies where they. I'm not saying we should all smoke on an. And I'm I'm not a smoker and whatever. I don't we should care. All smoke but, on airplanes. I agree but, with that. Yeah. But but they used to smoke on aircraft. They used to travel in suits. They used yeah. to dress up. They yeah. they didn't get offended by everything. They yeah. they they seemed to understand that things were tough. They would stomp their laundry. I mean, what the hell? Yeah. And. They just, they never had social media, and yet they seem to communicate better. They they talk to each other. They would sit in restaurants. 
um, so I hear, and not sit on phones. Right. And they would, well, they would engage, said- they would eye contact, they would be there, and they wouldn't get offended by everything. Comedy was was okay. And it's the thing for me is it, it's like we've progressed, but we've gone way back, way back. You, you've said, and, you said the magic word, social media. Back in the day, there was no social media. And, the, and if you had a flip phone, you couldn't read stuff on it. So you had it no. engaged. Now, first of all, now parents don't teach their kids how to engage. That's number one. Number two, they don't teach them that at school either. So the kids don't know. When I was a kid, you had to learn to engage, look someone in the eye, shake their hand. It was a whole thing. So yeah. social media, and I give kudos to Australia. They're banning social media. Yes, for everybody. They're, they're trying yeah. to ban for, yes. I think, six, 16 and under. You can't. They're trying to stop. Uh, kids under 16 from accessing social yeah. media. Good luck, by the way. But okay. yes, I can think I of a dozen do. a dozen ways of getting around that. But yes, right. uh, good luck. Yeah. Yeah. But hopefully that makes society better. And I think to, part of your thing is, I think social media has made us weak and made us pussies. Full stop. It's, that's it. Yeah. And if well, it's made us old pop- school or you're not. You know what else it's done? There was always this tendency online for a bravado to creep in. You wouldn't right. take people on face to face like that, but online yeah. you get these ridiculous comments and oh you suck and you this and you right. that because you can't see the person. It's like people in cars, they're very brave right. in the car. Right. Um but so it's someone steps out of the car. <laughs> yeah, so well then it's yeah, hello. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean there's a story right. of my grandfather um and his and he had this very uh, big friend. His name was Tommy Domena. Tommy was his name. My grandfather was Harold. Harold and Tom, they used to go to the the cinema and they would, you know, be watching a movie and somebody would get uh, pissed off by something and they would take Tommy on like, oh, whatever, you get out of my way. And and he was a, what is it about big people? They're always very calm. And and he would just sit there and go, I'm sorry, ma'am, if you feel that way, just move away. Look, I don't know what the exact conversation was or the nature of the the argument. You know, something was done. Anyway, and... Or the bloke would want to take him on. And then Tom, Tommy would stand up. And the man was six foot eight. Wow. And I would be gone. Just yeah. gone. And and he would say, Well, I thought we were chatting. But it's it's so it's so silly how we we've the social media thing is has made us into the into tiny little bullies. We like we seem right. to love bullying people. And mm-hmm. we don't we don't engage with people. We don't we've we we seem to uh, what I wanted to say is this. It's made what people do is they is they find out is they find out about um, is they fi- sorry that's that's a call I need to take they find out about uh, something they do some research okay. get one percent of the story and suddenly they're an expert right um, Stephen just give me a second please mate just give me a second mate welcome to live everybody we'll just put roll on mute. So he can take he can take the call. So if, if you're just joining us on the show, there he goes walking away. Um, we'll be we're talking about social media and what social media does for um, the the workforce and everybody. So there you go. Leave us your comments and your thoughts. And in a few minutes, if Mr. Roll doesn't come back, we're just going to kill the show. And you guys can go enjoy your Thanksgiving. This is what they call a lull in the show. And if I had a commercial, I would run it. Oh, I do have a commercial, and I will run it. So hold on. And he's back. Daddy's back. I was about to run a commercial. So there you go. But I'm glad I didn't. So the portion of this program is brought to you by Alaskan Airlines. Okay. Anyway. I run our merch commercial. (laughs) No, but what I wanted to say, Stephen, is that um, people get, they get, it's like, back to what we were talking about, voters, the one issue voter. um, So for instance, um, you know, people, I mean, the, 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 the COVID thing was fantastic. We got all right. these experts coming out. Brilliant. It was astonishing how smart people were. They, we, we had all these medical specialists who knew more than doctors. And right. I think that just, um, it, it was like a catalyst for, for, for ignorance taking over the, uh, the world. There, there is just right. so much. There is so much I am quite willing to say I don't know. Most things I don't know. Fact, I don't. Why? Right. Why would I? There's so much information out there, but uh, what do they call it? The Dunning Kruger effect, or whatever it is. You're not smart enough to know how stupid you are. Correct. You know? That's the problem. Yeah. You don't know that you really know nothing, and yeah. and there are so, there's so much of it. 
And instead of instead of finding out, instead of getting the facts, um, it, it looks better if you just make some noise at a campus or or insult someone online. And that feeds something in your ego. But you haven't changed anything. It's like when you get offended yeah. with a comedian. What right. you, you haven't let's say you feel strongly about I don't know, you your favorite short people. You know, you don't like, I know you don't like short oh. people. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you go to you go so the you're the comic and some guy stands right. up and says game and why are you many mad short people short people are gonna write to exist as well you go this is a joke no, no. They don't. yeah no, they don't. <laughs> so sit down you short shit and shut up no okay. but but <laughs> but this this is the, the thing they they now what's happened is we still have the same number of short people the right, right. short people haven't changed nobody right. People probably care less about short people now. So your protest, sir, has done nothing. In fact, it might have actually made it worse for short people. So this sure. is the thing. It's like the oil thing. All these people who protest, you know, you might have a, a case. Just yeah. stand up and talk to people like a decent human being. You know, Stephen, I, agree. I know you don't like short people, but, you know, maybe have a cigar with them and you'll find they also like cigars and I don't know, maybe you guys can that give them a smaller cigar. But their little feet won't touch the floor when they're in the chair. They'll just stay. And if they have a protest, but, they but have the a point protest. is the point is the point is, Stephen, is it's about it's about just having a conversation and social media and things like that yeah. just kill it. They kill the conversation. And everybody thinks they're an expert. I, I want to know something. What's wrong with me? Let me go, let me go and Google it. Oh, I'm dying oh, of a heart God. attack. No, you've got indigestion. The pain right, is right, in the right. same place. Bam. Yeah. Web MD is the best. Expert. When you go to WebMD, it doesn't matter what you've done. You stubbed your toe. I love WebMD. You a friend died. of mine checks WebMD for died. everything. I, I love these are, it's like, oh, you stubbed your toe, and it gives you everything that could go wrong. And at the very <laughs> last sentence, is, you could possibly die, go to a hospital. I'm like, oh my God, stop with that. It's like the best. Anytime he calls me with something, I go, did you go to WebMD? And he's like, <laughs> I should go. I go. Let's go to WebMD because I was. I love reading it, especially the last part that says you could right. die and you yeah. should go to the hospital. I always start with that though because it's more fun for him to panic. Oh, I just so want to say, I, not that I don't like short. I love short people. Everybody should own a couple. I have a midget butler. Um, no, it's very it's cool, and I do. I have two of them. They make like a full person. I pay half price. Um, <laughs> but when a short person waves, is that a microwave? Oh no! <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. You know, uh, speaking of that, um, it was yeah. interesting because uh, Jim Jeffrey was going in about dwarves, and apparently, you know, like right. that word. same thing as a short dwarves. person, yeah, yeah, but really small people. And he and he was saying how dwarves, like how Peter Dinklage, just ruined it for dwarf for dwarves, ruined it for them <laughs> because um, they're not allowed to make movies now with dwarves. They have to get regular sized people. But then he's like, "Well, snow. It's literally Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. That's right. what it is." Yeah. And no, 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 no. Apparently, he says Peter Dinklage says no. That's offensive. I don't know if that's true. And and right. you've got to you've got to respect people's what height. Okay, I don't I know. Guess. Don't call them For little the people, whatever. Yeah. And and now now the dwarf guys are going. Excuse me, we were okay with that. We were getting paid. Yeah. We were getting work. Yeah. Now yeah. look what you've done, you piece of shit. And 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 I don't know. But <laughs> this. This is who cares? I mean, that's I the thing. I have a good one for you on this. Yeah, I just saw the movie. I saw. I've seen the Broadway show Wicked. The Broadway show much better than the movie. That being said, um, if you've seen the original Wizard of Oz with Judy Garland and whatnot, when they go to I have Munchkinland, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's the midgets. They have like fifty little little people running around. Little Brad Williams, who I love really? as a you know, comic, by the way. Brad Williams is the yeah. great. He's a little midget comic. I love him because when you're done, you put him in your pocket. And you take them home with you, but anyway. Um, so but they're these they're talking, and you know why you get too soon, anyway. So, in The Wizard of Oz, um, yeah, I'm not woke. In The Wizard of Oz, the original one, they have midgets or little people, dwarfs, whatever you want to call them, you know, playing Munchkin Land vertically Wicked, challenged, ver I whatever they are. I don't care, stand on a phone book, anyway. And Wicked, they get to Munchkin Land, and I'm like, why are all these people like 6'3? I don't see any little like munchkin people like no, and i'm like no. I get, and 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 even in wicked which i thought was interesting because they're trying to be politically correct we had people in Why? wheelchairs we had all this stuff and i'm like i'm okay it's with all that story. it's 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 a dance thing in the musical uh maybe not so i mean i'm glad they did it but sort of like i think 
I think the wokeness now, and going back to that, is just a little too bit out of hand. No, like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantasy say, movie. So let's yeah. fantasy. It's not real. It's not right. real, people. Right, right. If, it, if it was real, wheelchairs. And then my point, my mind was, well, why aren't there midgets then in this movie? If we're going to have someone in a wheelchair, I want someone in a, I want, I want a little person. I want Brad Williams to be my I want. I want a small person playing a small person's part. Is that too much to us? That's correct. I don't want people. Is that too much to us? I feel he might nail it a bit better, you know? I feel it'll be more convincing. It's like Tom Cruise should never, like Tom Cruise should never been Jack Reacher. I'm just saying, literally in the book, Jack Reacher is six foot five. He is six foot five. He's yeah. a long one. I mean, yeah. you know, camera angles and stuff aside, you know, when Jack Reach is standing outside a pub, he's got to look better than the other guys. He can't be the yeah. same size or smaller because they're not really, it's not really that intimidating. It's a story. Yeah. It's fiction. For the love of yeah. God, can we get a six foot five guy to play him? So there we go. And now they do. And vice yeah. versa. Yeah. I want to see if it says Snow White and the Seven or I want to see dwarves. That's what I want to see. Yeah. It's more yeah. believable, even though it's bullshit. And in Munchkin Land on Wicked, on the movies, I want to see 50 little people. I do not want to see people that look like you and I. And I'm like, okay, exactly. we're the little people. Now, because yeah. the kids that have seen the movie have never seen the original Wizard of Oz because parents don't show them crap. And I think it's on H it's either on HBO or, or, or Amazon now. Like, it's playing. And I watched it again before I went to go see Wicked. And I was like, you see, that's a nice movie. It's very beautiful. And there's little people. I didn't make fun of them. But you can't, you know, you know it's easy to carry them in you know, your pocket. But it's fun. So. But you know what, Stephen? Here's the thing. All, all of us, you, me, anyone, there's something about us that everybody can pick on. And you know what oh, they yeah. say? The ones that love you the most pick on you. So, you know. And I love just, everybody. I must. Ah, exactly. And and <laughs> I've got to tell you, when I was a kid, we had we had we had the big guy, we had the small guy, we had yeah. the guy that used to impersonate yeah. people and make people laugh. That yeah. was me. And and you know what? We needed all of those guys. They were all yeah. part of the team. They were different, but they were all they were no one thought. I mean, I know this sounds like a, a, a kumbaya moment, but we didn't look at the, the small guy and go, yeah, you're a little guy. We think less of you. In fact, he was really funny, and he was he was yeah. a tremendous guy. He was a hell of a good sportsman, and, and he just we, – we would have had a problem with him if he was a shit. He wasn't. Right. He was a very decent guy, and he – it was impossible to make fun of him because he just right. loved it. He loved the attention, and yeah. and anybody who made fun of him was just wasting their time. And that's yeah. why that's why guys make fun of other guys. That's why we prank fun. other guys because we, we want to see we want to see if they're an idiot or not. We right. know we're an idiot. We want to see right. if they're an idiot. So you go into a new group. You don't know who this guy is. You join a group, and they want to yep. see Stephen. Is he a guy we can have fun with, have a beer yeah. with, have a cigar with, or is he just a is he just some work idiot? Sticking them right. Yeah. So they drop a bucket of water on you, they apple pie your bed, whatever it is, yeah. and the way you react to that. Can you take a joke? As a right. guy, you must be able to take a joke because there's so much shit out there. We can have fun as guys, but buddy, you gotta be able to take a joke. We gotta be yeah. able to give you a hard time. It's not serious, but if you take it seriously then it's serious and that's yeah. the that's the fun part about i can't speak for women but that's the fun part about being a guy it's fantastic yeah. you meet your buddy at the airport you piece of shit blah 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 yeah. look at you you look like you're 100 years old no it's not yeah. fucking serious but right. don't take it seriously we need to be able to make fun of big people of small people of fat right. people of stupid people it's well, fantastic people especially and stupid especially people. fat people i right. i love it I love yeah. the attention people can make whatever fun of me. It's great. It means you're part of something. But That's right. when we start talking about the guy's mother, well, it can be a little tricky. Just a minute. Well, and, and it depends what she looks we like. Can... I don't know what it might be. That's true. But when we were kids growing up and we would yeah. do that, we considered that yeah. bonding. We did bonding. No, you can't do yeah. that. Look, they, 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 they want to shut <laughs> all this down. And, yeah. and the, the problem, Stephen, is if you – Certainly, I can't. I don't. I'm not going to patronizingly speak for women, but I can say as a as a as as a slightly normal guy growing up, right. it was very important that we could just talk shit. You must be. Right. You've got to be able to do that because yeah. if guys can't talk, if they can't rib each other and make fun of this and whatever, it's still in the yeah. head. 
going to come yeah. out somehow. It's going to get mm -hmm. aggressive, going to get ugly. We need comedy. We need to be able to laugh at other people, especially fat people like you, that you like to laugh at. Um, <laughs> whatever. And, and sometimes we go, oh, wow, that's me. Yeah. That's kind of me. Yeah. Ah, you know? And it can you can't be make really fun of yourself. It almost can almost be educational. Oh. Yeah, but I, keep, I make fun of me all the time. Like on the yeah. cigar show. I mean, and even with, with my associates, I'll make fun of me. Because it's fabulous. It's, okay, if you can make fun of yourself, then making fun of someone else is oh. fine. I tell people, it's like, dude, if I don't make fun of you or joke with you, you have a problem because uh, it's not going to go yeah. well. So, so you know, it's, it's like, it's just, you got to just enjoy so it. It's free. Yeah. You don't have to watch yeah. what you say. You don't have to manufacture a conversation. You go, ooh, I might say the wrong thing. Please right. say the wrong thing. Say the wrong Please thing. do that. Yeah. And that's why a guy like Jim Jeffries and Jimmy Koss, people love that because that's actually, it, that's what people want. And if, yeah. if that's not what people wanted, Jim Jeffries and Jimmy Carr wouldn't have careers, but they're making yeah. a fortune. They're doing great because that is what people want. They want to just be able to just hear that shit. Just, just go do it. Yeah. Lovely. I mean, I Jim's know. stories are crazy, but it's yeah. fantastic. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I think it's just how, like, I was raised with the Marx Brothers and Abbott and Costello and Don Rickles, and I think it's how you're raised. Don Rickles. And, yeah, Don Rickles was the big. If Don Rickles was still alive today, they would cancel him. Probably get canceled. Times and he could care probably less. get canceled. Yeah, yeah probably but get he was canceled. There. Don Rickles. Yeah, he's hysterical. I mean, like, you know what? He says, but he meant it with you love. Let me tell you something about, well, look, I don't know. I, I haven't met him. I don't know. But I'm just saying my feeling is that if they try to cancel Don Rickles, he would just go, yeah. what? Who cares? I don't care. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. that's a you problem. That's and correct. I mean, you couldn't cancel Don Rickles anyway. No, they still can't yeah. cancel him. There's people today that show shorts of his stuff, and they're like, I'm so offended. How did he say that? I'm like, grow up. Put a, get a well, pair he of did. Balls. He just did. He literally just did. There you go. You're done. Yeah. Done. And, and now you're and talking people, about it, and he made money. Great, good for him. And he and people went to go see him. Yeah, they knew what they were going to get. I thought the best stories are the ones where he talks about old Vegas and the mob and Frank Sinatra. Um, when he talks about the when he tells those stories, I'm like, I'm when I watch an old Carson with him on it, and he tells, I laugh till I'm crying because it's just, you know, that was back in the day, and it's you know, sort of, if they don't have that. Have you ever seen a movie called Tropic Thunder? I always bring this up. In, in of course, everybody cat. saw Tropic Thunder with Tom right. Cruise. We talked about this. Now, uh, with who? You and I talked about two weeks ago, Tropic Thunder, the new movie with Tom Cruise dancing. Should be Les Grossman doing a whole series under himself. Oh, yes, 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 yes right. Tom Cruise. Oh, right. Yes, of course he was in it. The yes, is kicking okay. in, isn't it? <laughs> um, best thing he ever did. But, but the thing about that movie is interesting because – there are so many people now, you're obviously watching for the first time, and they are right. shocked by Robert Downey Jr. and, you know, the whole blackface thing. Right. And, look, I, I'm not going to get into that because I, I don't care. I mean, I could. I yeah. think that, I think he was great, and yep. if people are bothered by that, tough. But what I do find interesting, I did go and research what people's reactions were to this, what this all this offense. Yeah. And what was interesting is the people. Let's just put, let me put it this way. Because a little bit of thoughts required. The people that yeah. you would have imagined, you know, the people that should have been offended, I thought it was fantastic. They loved it. Bring it on. They didn't care. And the people, the people that didn't talk to the people said, oh, they must think that it's bad. Well, why don't you have yeah. a chat? They're human right. beings. Why don't you forbid. talk to them? Yeah. They just have more melanin in their skin. They're still yeah. human beings and they yeah. can laugh. And they can laugh at themselves. Look at that. Isn't that amazing how they're doing that? You presumptuous piece of crap. Don't. Yeah. Wow. Seriously. Yeah. No one. Who's offended by that? It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, the scene where he goes, where, where Ben Stiller turns around and he says to him, he says, I don't know. They're moaning about something. The map right. or navigation or something. And he says, what is with you? What is it with you people? And you remember what Robbie Downer Jr. character says? He says, what do you mean you people? people? And the other guys, what, the you, what do you? What do you people mean? You people. people. That's right. Brilliant. That was the best. But it's I literally just on. watched that. But After it's we great. Did the show three weeks ago, I actually rewatched it because I had. I just because it's hysterical. The best. So, yeah, but, but it's true. You see, we've got to let that stuff's got to be out there. We've got to be able yeah. to do that. 
The people that don't like it, then don't watch it. Really, don't smoke yeah. the cigar if you don't. If you don't, okay. just get out of the cigar lounge. Just stay out. You don't have. No one's saying you have to go in to the cigar lounge. But if you go into the cigar lounge, leave your shit at the door. Correct. And, and it's the same with okay. movies, with yeah. commentary, with tea, whatever. Just. Just stay out of that. If, if it if it bothers you so much, I don't like sewage, so I'm gonna climb in a sewer pit. You understand me? Because it's sure smell. I got it. Yeah. And it, and it's really uncomfortable. Why would you climb in a sewer pit and go? God, it stinks in you. Yeah, right. it does because it's full of shit. Right. That's what it is. So if you climb in and it smells, well, hello. If you go to a Jim right. Jeffries concert or performance. And you get those jokes, well, it's Jim Jeffries or Jimmy right. Carr. If you go into a cigar lounge and they smoke, damn right. Yeah. So stay and out of it. And if Good you're a Lord, person, man. only smoke a little Robusto. Because if you smoke the big one, it just looks out of place. I'm just saying, you know, if you're smoking a Churchill or a big, like, thick ring gauge at that point, you know, and your feet you know, are touching the ground and you're sitting in the big in the big chair, I'm just saying, like, you know, it's just so it doesn't look Steve good. and I, I got. I got to tell you, um, I mean, I'm one of my, I'm about, I'm about 5'11", but my father, uh, strange enough, was quite small. He was about, my mom was about the same height. They say you get your height from your mom. My mom's family were very tall people. I right. couldn't say I've got most, I'm average, I'm fine. But my dad was okay. about, I mean, he was about 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, okay. And he loved it. He lapped it up. And, yeah. and it, was, it was just great. He certainly did not have short man syndrome. and. Right. He didn't care. He was a bar, barman, bartender, whatever you want to call it. The guy who served drinks behind the counter, bar sure. person, or whatever the fuck that is. And yeah. and he he was fine. You know, he survived. He wasn't the tallest guy. Who cares? And yeah. the strange thing was, the strange thing about my father is all his friends were really big people. So, oh, wow. that was, yeah. And But he was like the leader. And you know when that's yeah. happened again? My son. Okay, my son's about my height, but still. All his friends of, I mean, he's got friends that are like six, 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 five. Wow! But guess who? That's the, great. Guess who the guess who the leader is? Him. Your son. Yeah. His name's Marshall. He's okay. like a marshal. We yeah, named yeah. him that. We didn't realize he would be that, but that just shows you. It, it's my God. And if you know a, a short guy who has got a sense of humor, if you make fun of him and you're trying mm -hmm. to you're trying to stick it to him, you're the one who looks like the idiot. If you're joking, you him, if you're joking with him, you're joking with him, fine. But if let you're me, getting personal, you. no one likes that. No, no, never yeah. get personal. Like joking like their feet can't touch the ground. That's just fact. But anyway, Brad Williams, <laughs> who's a, I think he says he's he's four feet or he's 3'11 or something. Yeah. I've seen his shows. I've seen him in concert. He is yeah. hysterical and he plays on his dwarfness. And and he and he's like it's like he's it, it's like he says it's it's okay to make fun and and when we make fun of people and that's why i don't think people understand when they watch some of the shows is you know this is they're they're called shows people like yeah. you know what i'm saying and they, i think yeah. people lose that they go yeah right it's entertainment and people will be like hey, oh my god like the person that, like, i could never work for you you'd be such a horrible boss and i'm like i'm Great. good fine. And don't. Good. And don't work for me but i mean it's kind of like people when just, like you know, yeah, it's very, like we're good, so don't apply. So, but when we make fun of like the short people. Now, I have nothing against short people, all right, maybe. Um, but no, I'm just saying, I nothing against them or the fat people. It's just they're jokes. It's to make people laugh and and like, okay, you know what I mean? Because if you're serious all the time, you're gonna depress everybody. So you gotta, stuff. Like, bring happens, yeah. yeah, we don't want. So that. you enjoy, you joke, you have a good time, and I think a lot of people forget that humor is a wonderful thing. Yes, um, we need and it. I don't take seriously. So it works out real well for me. So that's why people yeah. loved Ricky Gervais so much at the at the yeah. Golden Globes. Oh, they were bothered by it. You know what? The, the the people in the audience were bothered by it, but the several million people watching it thought this Billion. is the greatest Billions awards you know, I've ever watched. Watch. Yeah. It's fantastic. He's saying what we think. And yeah. that's actually what a comedian does yes. properly. He's saying properly. what you think in a more entertaining way whatever with a dose of humor but truly proper uh comedy is is quite honest to be honest yeah. you know it yeah. has to be it's, well, it's it's a yeah. yeah it's, it's fantastic yeah. steven i gotta go i, I gotta go you. 
Yeah. Hey, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you all next Thursday. Cheers. Good to see you. Have a wonderful holiday, everybody. See you next Thursday. Cheers. Thank you so much for listening to this Harold Woods, Rob Vega, whatever the hell he wants to call himself, fellow. You know, this this podcast thing, it, it makes him feel very important and he's a difficult fellow as it is to deal with. So thank you so much for putting up with him and, and do take care.